As many of you know, the oil price differential is a crisis for Alberta and a crisis for Canada. The federal finance minister called it a national problem. I agree. But it also requires a national solution and one the federal government is best suited to provide. At the very least, they must step up to help. Alberta is calling on Ottawa to help it buy more rail cars to move the province's oil to market. The provincial government is hopeful the move will pick up oil prices from the floor. Right now, a barrel of Canadian oil is selling for a lot less than it used to be, much lower than what other countries' oil sells for. Here's what led to the price gap in the first place. Compare two barrels of oil, one produced in Canada, the other in the U.S. Canada's oil sells for less than oil produced south of the border, often referred to as the price differential. Why? Because Canadian oil is heavier, making it harder and more expensive to refine. Oil prices are also affected by where the oil is produced. The further you have to transport it to a refinery, the less you get for it. The current price gap began to widen significantly in late 2017 after the Trans-Canada Keystone Pipeline spill in South Dakota. Storage facilities then filled up in Alberta. Too much oil and limited ways to move it forced prices down. The current $40 per barrel discount for Canadian oil is the worst since 2014. Canada is already transporting a record amount of oil by rail. According to the National Energy Board, crude by rail exports from Canada reached nearly 270,000 barrels per day in September, double last year's level. Alberta Premier Rachel Notley wants to buy 7,000 rail cars to move an extra 120,000 barrels of oil a day by rail. So that adds up to 390,000. That's still well below the capacity that the Trans Mountain expansion would create. And it costs more to ship by rail than by pipeline, a lot more, sometimes triple the cost, according to the NEB. And oil isn't the only commodity on the tracks. CP and CN already face major backlogs of grain shipments. So there's a big question mark hanging over how grain farmers will react if Ottawa ends up subsidizing more oil by rail. So will Alberta's plan to increase oil by rail work and boost oil prices? It's time for a reality check. Brett House is the Deputy Chief Economist for Scotiabank Economics and he joins us from Toronto. Hi Mr. House, nice to see you again. Good to see you. So you've been on the show uh, over the past few weeks and we've been talking about uh, looking to do a bit of a reality check on the issues the oil sector is facing and the possible solutions. We've got some more numbers now to flesh out what Alberta as a province is pitching. Uh, the, the government there says they're willing to pay for as many as 7,000 extra rail cars to ship an additional 120,000 barrels of oil a day. How viable is that? Uh, well, it's certainly possible to buy those rail cars. It's not possible to get them operational immediately, and that's what it would really take to get the discount on Alberta oil back down to the levels that we normally expect to see. So basically, it's a timeline thing. I mean, and we've talked about this a bit before, but this is, would you, would you consider this sort of a medium-length solution, a long-term solution? Definitely not, from what you're saying, something that would, that would hit the acute nature of the problem. It doesn't hit the acute nature of the problem, but nothing really would aside from a cutback in production. Uh, the rail cars are expected to come online sometime in Q3 2019. By that point, we already anticipate that there'll be some pullback in production. There'll also be a ramp up that's already planned by the major rail operators uh, to increase uh, the number of barrels per day getting out of the province on trains. And by November of 2019, we do expect to see Line 3 coming on. So a new pipeline that should alleviate a lot of the overcapacity uh, or oversupply that we have right now. So um, it's, it's uh, a technically sound idea, but one that has timing issues that are not really fully resolved yet. You mentioned save and accept uh, production uh, cuts uh, when it comes to addressing the acute nature of the problem. What is your take on, uh, I mean, the government, Premier Notley was on our show a couple days ago. She said within the week she would be making a decision. What do you think they should and, and will do? Well, you know, one of the downsides of a production cut is that it affects different producers differently, and so it amounts to choosing winners. Uh, for the companies that produce only in Alberta and Saskatchewan, uh, they would love to see a production cut so that the price discount comes in because they make all their money on barrels produced in Alberta. For big international companies and those that have integrated production uh, facilities where they sell onward to their own refiners, they're a lot less fussed about the discount that you have in place right now. What's worth mentioning as well is that you know, the numbers that are being cited on the extent 
of the cut needed uh, really reflect the maximum discount that we saw about a month ago, which was out at about $50. It's come into around $30 now. So the kind of cut you would need to restore normal discounts is a lot smaller than the numbers we've heard bandied around. Th those numbers are, for example, Jason Kenney, the leader of the opposition in Alberta, was saying it should be a mandatory 10 percent. I know you're saying that the, the, the differential is a bit smaller now, and it, it seems to have vacillated. It's hovered, it seems, mostly around the $40 mark, which is big. It's not Normal is like 12 to $15. Yeah, normal would be uh, around 10 to $15, and for oil that goes by rail, the discount's somewhere closer to around $18 to $22 to account for the extra cost involved in rail transportation. Uh, but, you know, the the first month future right now is at 30 bucks, so it's actually a bit tighter than the $40 he cited, and that's down a lot from a month ago. So, you know, thinking about a cut is something that has to be done very carefully, and it may be worth waiting a bit longer to see how the market continues to shake out. I wanted to also ask you about something on the rail car pitch that the province is making. They're also the province gave it their fiscal update today, and the finance minister Joe Cici uh, was saying that that there would be no, essentially they would just break even on the on the uh, rail cars uh, or making that kind of purchase. Can you explain how that might be possible, or is it possible? I, it could be possible. I think we need to see a lot more information from the government on this. Um, I mean, we, we don't know what they're paying for the rail cars. We don't know what kind of maintenance contract they may be signing on them. We don't know what kind of fees they're going to be charging uh, for the shipment of oil on them and what kind of terms they're going to get from the network rail operators in order to get them onto their tracks. So it's a bit hard to say, and it's a bit hard to say what break even means unless you have a time horizon around it as well. So it's entirely possible, but on the info we have, I, I, I can't say. And when we asked the Premier for it, she said that they're in the middle of negotiations, uh, and so they, they couldn't disclose that kind of thing. What might those negotiations entail, and how does it work for people who sort of don't understand how, how rail works in this country? How, what might be happening behind closed doors? Well, you know, rail and pipelines are two of the things where a lot works in theory, but then what really governs what happens is what works in practice. And so, you know, there's an initial negotiation on uh, actually sourcing and paying for the rail cars. There's a second step on getting those rail cars to Alberta, and it's not entirely clear uh, that the network rail operators have the space or capacity or slots to get those cars into place at the time that the government wants them there. And then there's a question of getting them then uh, connected to uh, engines uh, and out of the out of the province when they're actually loaded up. It's about a, an eight to ten day loading and travel time to the Gulf Coast and more like a five or six day travel time to the West Coast. Um, so, you know, it's not an instantaneous solution even if everything works perfectly. Yeah, it'll be an interesting few days to see what they decide. Thank you so much, Mr. House. Really appreciate your time. Thank you.